Raymond here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, in the past, uh, I've really only done top 10 lists at the end of each year to kind of rank my favorites. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do this year is mix in some other kinds of top 10 lists throughout the year. So today I have for you one of those lists. Uh, over time, as I've delved deeper into the fountain pen hobby, I've, I've really found that my tastes have changed and refined from when I was just starting out. Uh, I have a better idea of what works for me and the style and size of pens that I prefer. Uh, over time, I found myself gravitating toward larger pens, so I haven't focused that much on smaller pocket pens. Uh, so I thought it was about time to give some love to smaller pens and present my top 10 pocket pens. Uh, I will say that in regards to the rankings and the pens I included on this list, um, it's not only based on my personal preference, but I also wanted to include a few pens that, while they might not be my personal favorites, uh, they're very well respected and loved in the community. So there are a couple on this li list that have basically earned their spot, even though they might not be my personal absolute favorite. And coming in at number 10 is one of those pens. Uh, it's a pen from Pilot that has been around for quite some time, and that is the Pilot Elite. Now, there are a few different variations on this pen. Uh, there's a more modern version called the E95S, uh, and there are some Elites that were produced for the Korean market, uh, which have a significantly lower price, but that's to be expected because they have a steel nib as opposed to the gold nibs on this one. Uh, and that, to be clear, uh, the Korean versions are not knockoffs. They were manufactured by a company in South Korea who licensed the name from Pilot. Uh, the Elite has one of the longer caps you will see on just about any pen. I mean, uh, let's see, the largest pen I have in my collection is this Danny Trio. Uh, and that uh, this is the Elite next to it. And the cap on the uh, Elite is actually longer than the, uh, the cap on my Danny Trio, the largest pen. Uh, but when you uncap the Elite, like most other pocket pens, uh, the barrel is a bit on the short side. Uh, once you post the pen, uh, the cap adds significant length and turns this into uh, more of a reasonable length. Uh, the gold nibs on these Elites are very nice, especially the vintage models. Uh, the Elite has one of the more unique capping experiences. Um, you start feeling tension at about like this point right here. Uh, and th then you have to push a little harder, not excessively hard, but harder in order to fully cap the pen. It's unique. Um, for me, this design is a bit dated. It, for me, it looks like something out of the 1970s. And while I was a child of the 70s, it doesn't necessarily hit home for me. Uh, at number nine, we have a pen that was really a surprise to me. Um, you know, a while back, uh, I was checking out pens on eBay and came across Visconti that I was not familiar with. Uh, and it was manufactured back in the early 1990s and had an interesting look. Um, I was able to pick it up for a reasonable price, and so I was kind of really excited about my purchase. And when it arrived, I was significantly surprised because I thought I was purchasing a standard size pen and what arrived was this, the Visconti Viscontina. Now, I went back to the auction just to check to make sure all of the sizes or measurements were there. And I, I guess I had just chosen to ignore them apparently because the, uh, the listing did not misrepresent the product. I just really didn't pay attention. I just kind of got, uh, uh, I saw the price and I thought it was fantastic looking and so I picked it up. I guess I just need to pay closer attention. Uh, the end result here is a, a pretty great little pen. Uh, it's a limited edition of 388 pens. Uh, it has a 14 karat gold nib, and Visconti's 14 karat gold nibs are famously good, even this very small one. Uh, it does have the traditional curved Visconti clip, uh, but it doesn't have the lettering like the Visconti's of today. Uh, the filling system is unique as well. Um, there is a little piston in here which you push and pull in order to fill the pen with ink. Uh, this is a pen that without posting is very small and that it wouldn't be comfortable for me to use in longer writing sessions. Um, but this is one of the few pens that I'll keep on my desk and grab whenever I need to jot something down quickly. Uh, the 14 karat gold nib on this pen is very nice. Uh, I like it a great deal. Uh, I, I guess I really lucked out on this one. For purchasing something that was basically the exact opposite of what I intended, uh, the end result is me ending up with a pretty good little pen. So I'll take mistakes like that.
Next up, at number eight, uh, we have a pen from Twisby. And that pen is the Twisby Mini. Uh, one thing I like about the Mini is that it has a bit more girth to it than some of the other pocket pens on this list. And while it's small in stature, it doesn't necessarily feel like a pocket pen in the hand. Um, it's long enough so that if you need to use it for a shorter period of time, you won't have too much discomfort. Um, but the cap does post. Now, this is, well, this is one of my things that I'm not super thrilled about is, uh, uh, is the posting mechanism. Um, that uh, in general, twisting to post isn't my favorite way to post a pen. Now, um, some user, users have experienced some cross-threading when capping and posting on this pen, but I haven't experienced that on my specific pen. Uh, this is a piston filling clear demonstrator, which is nice. And for a small pen, it has a fairly large ink capacity. Um, I've generally been a fan of most, Twis most of Twisby's offerings, and the, uh, the Mini is no exception. Coming in at number seven is a pen that I do not own. It's a pen that's on loan to me by my friend Liz, uh, and it's one of her daily carry pens. Uh, and it's one of the pens that while it doesn't necessarily work for me personally, I feel that it's really earned a spot on this list. And that pen is the Caveco Lilliput. Here it is. Um, it is a very small pen. And while it's small, it by no means feels cheap. Um, it's made from a lightweight aluminum. Uh, the cap unscrews, and for me, uh, that this barrel is way too short for me to use comfortably, but this is a screw to post pen. And when you do use do that, that it transforms into more of a standard size. Uh, and while I'm really not talking about price that much in regard to this list, um, the variance in price between the different models of the Lilliput is rather drastic. Um, you can pick up this standard black model here with a steel nib for around $50, uh, but there are other versions with different treatments on the barrel that come with a gold nib that can run over $400. Uh, now, I've tried the Lilliput out at shows, uh, which is a great place to try out pens, and I felt it was just too small for me. Uh, and now, I've had a chance to play around with this one for a couple of weeks as opposed to just picking it up at a show, and did that change my mind? I, n no. Uh, for me, it's just too small, but that has to do with my personal preferences and not this pen. Uh, my actual impression of the quality of the Lilliput really increased, though, and, and I f really feel that it does deserve a place on this list. Next up, at number six, we have another Quebeco. Uh, this is the Skyline Sport. Um, when I was just starting out, out in the hobby, uh, you know, I really scoured through tons of the top 10 lists for starter pens, and this was one that consistently showed up on those lists. Uh, you know, I hesitated picking one up for a while because I really wasn't quite sold on the looks. It really doesn't look like any other pen out there that I had seen. And it took me a while before I eventually picked one up. Uh, it was my first clipless pen, so I, I really wasn't even sure how I would like that. So I bought this slide-on clip. Um, I've always eyedroppered the Skyline Sport as well. Uh, it's a great pen for doing that. So it was my first eyedropper. Uh, and also doing so in this barrel gives you a huge ink capacity. Um, at the time, this was the smoothest writing nib that I owned. Um, it really just glides over the page, this medium. And that I like that you didn't need to screw to post it. Uh, Quebeco offers a lot of variations on the design in uh, metal and plastic and many colors. And I can see why some folks own lots of different sports. Um, they're enjoyable to use. And even though I, uh, I bought this clip, I, I really do think it probably looks better without it. At number five, we have another Twisby, which is the Twisby Vac Mini. Uh, the Vac Mini is just slightly larger than the regular Mini. Um, the main difference between these two pens is the filling mechanism. Uh, we saw earlier that the standard Mini has a piston, but as the name suggests, uh, this Vac Mini is a vacuum filler. Uh, you know, I've always enjoyed vacuum filling systems. Uh, I think seeing the ink get sucked up into the barrel is kind of cool. Uh, and the Twisby Vac 700 is one of my favorite pens under $100. Uh, 
Uh, the nib is very pleasant on this pen, as are most Twisby pens that I own. Um, again, I'm not a huge fan of the twist to post, but it operates more cleanly than some of the other twist to post pens on this list. Um, you know, it's a little odd because the VAC Mini is around $60, which I, uh, or it is $60, which is exactly how much a standard VAC is. And so between the two, I feel that the VAC 700 provides a bit more bang for the buck. But if you're looking for a smaller pocket pen, then the VAC Mini provides good value as well. Okay, four more to go. Coming in at number four is a pen from Pilot. And this is the Pilot Prera. Uh, now this is a great pocket pen. First of all, uh, I think the Prera might provide the most satisfying capping experience of any pen in my collection. Um, it's a unique feel. Um, round about here, you begin to feel some, well, I'll call it light tension. And then there's a very satisfying and smooth cap or snap when you cap the pen that um, it's one of those pens that I could just play around with all day in my hand, capping and uncapping it. Uh, it it's just kind of a unique feeling that I like. Um, Pilot nibs are typically great, even their steel ones, uh, like this one on the Prera. Um, that, you know, I just wish it had a, a, a a, a clear insert on this cap. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this white cap insert, but overall the Prera performs very well and I really like the overall looks of this pen. Even though for sometimes I'm not a huge fan of a uh, uh, of a, a converter inside of a clear demonstrator, I think it works here in the Prera. Um, they offer this pen in many different color options and it's a worthwhile addition to any collection. Okay, at number three is a pen that I feel might be the most controversial on this list. Uh, not because I included it, but that I ranked it this low. While number three is not very low, for many folks this is their favorite in their collection and considered by some to be their grail pen. And that pen is the Pilot Mew. Uh, I won't go into the entire history of this pen and the different variations, uh, the Mew, the M90, uh, I do have a review of the M90 on my channel, uh, and it was one of my very first videos, so excuse the quality. Um, this one here is a Mew from the 1970s, uh, and it's one of the more rare ones that has a black stripe on it. Um, you know sometimes when like tons of people love a band that, and uh, that you don't dislike them, but they just really don't do it for you? Uh, you can kind of appreciate their musical talents, but would rather listen to something else. That's kind of how I feel about the Mew. I, I really wish I liked it because there is a lot to love about this pen. Um, the Mew ha is very similar in design to the Elite. It's kind of a metal version of the Elite. Um, and I think that's what it boils down to for me. The design really looks like it's something out of the 70s, um, which just isn't necessarily my style. I do really like the stripes on this version though. Um, the distinguishing feature of the Mew is this integrated nib, which in my mind is one of the coolest features on just about any fountain pen out there. Um, you know, it's like your brain tells you that it shouldn't work but it does, and it writes fantastic. So this pen is on this list because of its reputation, and that I feel that that reputation is very well deserved. I just kind of wish that it fit more into my personal tastes. This one's on loan from, uh, from my friend David, uh, as well as the Elite, that he loaned me both of these as well. Okay, two more to go. And coming in at number two is a pen that until recently, I, I honestly really didn't even consider to be a pocket pen. And that is the Aurora Optima. When I was going through my collection in preparation for this video, um, I was getting together all of my smaller pens by size and it really caused me to take a second look at the Optima. Um, you can see here that it's really only slightly longer than the Twisby Vac Mini, that they're pretty close in size. Uh, you know, with this pen, I think that it has to do with the girth. It really doesn't feel like a pocket or a mini pen when you have it in your hand. Um, even though if you're just judging it by size, that it does. Um, in, a, in the hand, it really feels like a pen of standard size. Uh, the Aurora 14K nib is spectacular. Um, and I enjoy the overall design of the pen. Um, it, uh, it has a nice ink window here. And that 
I mentioned it elsewhere, uh, but I think it's just a, a bit funny that they make a clear demonstrator version of this pen, and it still has the ink window. Um, I mean, you know, that's at the point. The, uh, the entire pen at that point is the ink window, but I understand the reasoning. Uh, to eliminate the window, you'd have to redesign the entire pen. But the Aurora Optima is one of those pens that when I use it, I think to myself, you know, I really should use this more. Um, it gives a really pleasant writing experience and is a great pen, not just a great pocket pen. Okay, we have arrived at number one on my list of top pocket pens. Uh, and in this spot, I have a pen that I feel has a lot going for it. And that is the Pilot Stargazer. Or as it's known in the Asian markets, the Stella 90S. Um, it's a metal pen, so it does have a bit of weight to it. Um, I, it feels like a quality pen. Um, it's almost like a metal version of the Pilot Prera. This is what the, the Prera looks like. So it's kind of a, almost a metal version of the Prera. Um, they have the same satisfying capping mechanism, which I just love. Um, and the finish on this red model here has a lot of shimmer and depth to it, which is nice. The Stargazer is long enough for me to use it unposted, but it uh, posts very easily and the cap doesn't back weight the pen at all. Um, it has a 14 karat gold nib, which is fantastic. If you're looking for an entry level gold nib pen, this is one I highly recommend. Um, the price on these pens are very reasonable, and they're getting more reasonable because, unfortunately, Pilot has actually chosen to discontinue the Stargazer. Right now, you can find them for around $129, which is a fantastic price for this pen. Um, the Stargazer is a pen I really have sitting on my desk most of the time. It's really my go-to pen when I need to just jot down a quick note, usually on a sticky note. Um, the medium nib on this pen uh, really works well on low quality paper like sticky notes, uh, and it just feels great in the hand. Uh, yeah, I, I like this pen a great deal, and it is sad to see that it'll be going away, but um, then again, that's what will make it even more special when uh, down the line it becomes more and more difficult to get your hands on this great little pen. So, to recap, coming in at number 10, we have the Pilot Elite. Then at 9, we have the Visconti Viscontina. At number 8, there's the Twisby Mini. Number 7, the Quebeco Lilliput. Number six, the Quebeco Skyline Sport. At number five is the Twisby Vac Mini. Number four is the Pilot Prera. And three is the Pilot Mu or M90. Number two is the Aurora Optima. And coming in at number one is the Pilot Stargazer or the Stella 90S. So there you have it my top 10 pocket pens. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, like I said uh, at the top this year, I hope to kind of weave in some more non-review content with some more ink reviews as well as some more top 10s and things like that. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.